Let's have a look at this guy over here. Now it's not exactly, but it's very similar to a question that a lot of you have been encountering over the last few minutes, okay? We're integrating, and then you've got this sort of garbled mess in here. How do we deal with it, okay? Now the first, in the first instance, while you're still getting used to these, part of the reason we give you a reference sheet is to use it kind of like as a mental framework to interpret the questions that you get presented with. So this is the particular part of the reference sheet. You can find it, it is ex it's character for character. Um, it's like the second or third line on that column. This is the one that will help us, okay? Now, in the end, we want you to do so many of these questions that you can sort of see this. It's like a pair of glasses you always have in your mind that you can switch on and say, oh, I recognize this, right? The reference sheet's there to help you, but it's actually a time penalty if you've got to look it up every single time for every question, okay? It's there to help you if you've got no memory of things, but if you can remember it, which by doing these questions, you will, then that's obviously superior because you can see it right away. If I can see that I want to get this in the form, f dash sine of f of x, okay? I'm actually pretty close to that, right? Here's my sine, and then this guy here is my f of x. Do you see that? So I'm going to label that accordingly. That's my f of x. Now, if that's f of x, and if it helps you, even write it here on the side, what should f dash be if that's f of x? It's a, it's a half, right? Jermaine's exactly right. I want a half to appear here. Only problem is there's a 3 there instead. What a jerk. So that's OK. We can fix this easily, OK? I'm going to say that 3, you're not helping me. You're not anything like what I want you to be. So I'm just going to put you to one side. In fact, I'm just going to take it out of the integral altogether, OK? And then comes my integral. You'll notice I'm leaving a gap. You'll see why in a second. I want that to be a half, a half sine x on 2. That would be nice because it would exactly match this form with respect to x. Now, of course, you can't just go around putting halves in because it's more convenient to you. We have to make sure this stays equivalent to what we had before. So what would undo this multiplication by a half? There should be a 2 to compensate for that. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, you don't have to do it exactly like this, but for me, it helps me use a scaffold I know that I have. Okay. Now I'm ready to go. This 3 times 2 at the front, what's it equal to? Six. It's a 6, and I'm just going to leave it there because it kind of has, has nothing to do with the integration. It's outside of the integral altogether. And then this guy in here, it's in the perfect form. So what does it end up on in this case? Minus, Minus cos. What's, what's f of x? <laughs> it's, it's x on 2. I labeled it as so, right? So there's my x on 2, and then... There's my constant. Would it be negative okay. 6 cosine okay. x on 2? So at this point, I've done the integration, which is the hard part, but I should tidy it up. That 6 and that negative, et cetera, I'll write that minus out the front, and then I'm home and hosed. Are you happy with that? Okay. Now, you could, of course, and I hope you do, if you're not sure, convince yourself by differentiating back to here, and you're good to go. Now, the reason why this is such a useful mental framework is you could just use it over and over again. This is not a question in your current exercise, it's one from last week, but we can actually use the same kind of idea, right? This guy down here, right, is the f of x in this case. It doesn't match like this, like there's no signs, no trigger, anything like that. What it matches, or what it's going to match, is this guy, okay? Does anyone remember from last week, what does this integrate into? This is our? This is a log, right? Not just any log, it's the natural log. And then there's an absolute value, which we'll, we might talk about in more detail later, or maybe not. This is what we're going to end up with, okay? Now, have a look. If this is my f of x, what should be my f dash? One. Negative one. Negative it's negative one, right? Very close, right? So you're like, well, that's, that guy's no help at all, right? It's not a negative one. So this time I'm going to do it a little quicker to show you what it looks like when you're more comfortable with it, right? That 4, does it help me? Nope, so I put it outside. Okay. What I want up the top is a negative 1. Well, you can't just put a negative 1 there, so there's my negative to compensate. Do you see you can start to do this quite quickly once you get comfortable with it? On the bottom is still that 3 minus x. There's the dx that I had before telling me what to integrate to. And now, I'm pretty much good to go. What does that negative 4 do? N not, nothing much, it just hangs out the front. Okay, yeah, just times it by that. And then now I'm into this form, right? I'm going to do log of what? 
minus x. Yeah, 3 minus x is the f of x in this case, plus my constant, and you're finished. Max? <coughs> How did I get this minus 4 out the front? Okay, let's think, right? Where did the one step at a time, where did the 4 come from? It was just in the original question, so is that okay? The 4 came from what was given to me. Where did the minus come from? I introduced that. Where did it come from? Do you want to have a go, Mary? Yeah, it came from this numerator. I adjusted it so that it fit this form, right? Does that make sense? You're like, I want f dash up there. If this is f, that's my f dash. Is that okay?